Hey guys, happy Friday and welcome to another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist. So today I think we hit a record uh, temperature wise. It was briefly 110 outside and according to my cool vintage Angels thermometer, which seems to be pretty accurate, it hit 108 in the shop briefly. Um, so yeah, here I am building Volkswagens at 108 degrees in the shop. Good times. Um, so uh, our, our viewer and subscriber, Stu, uh, I just saw your comment. Yeah, I, I've actually been looking into buying a swamp cooler. Turns out you can get one that should have more than enough capacity for this shop for like 800 bucks. Um, Amazon actually has them. And so, yeah, I may just go ahead and pull the trigger on one of those because um, it is fucking hot in here excuse my language but um it's one thing when it's just me but then uh you know we're bringing jacob on and then obviously rafa will be here too uh back from vacation starting monday so um you know i don't necessarily want to subject those guys to 100 plus degree temperatures in the shop and uh you know there's i, I suppose there's somewhat of a safety issue i mean regardless of how much water you're drinking and stuff you know heat stroke and heat exhaustion stuff like that so I will probably go ahead and pull the trigger on one of those pretty soon. And from what I've heard, they work pretty good. Maybe reducing the temperature by up to, you know, 20, 25 degrees, that would be very welcome. So anyway, at 108 degrees today, um, I pretty much put the front end of the car together. I, uh, my zinc plating was actually done this morning as I had hoped. So thank you. Um, Richard over at uh, our zinc plater for getting those back to me in a timely manner and so yeah once I got the hardware that was pretty much all I was waiting for for the front um, those of you that subscribe or watch regularly know that I had the already had the front beam mounted and then the uh, torsion arms are just kind of dangling on there but there was literally like nothing else so yeah getting the hardware um, pretty much started out by putting on the, the grub screws and nuts to actually attach the arms. Again, those weren't even attached. They were on, but they weren't attached. Uh, so this stuff came back from zinc plating and got them on. This is all original hardware, by the way. Um, and then on those of you that have worked on link pin cars before know that you like measure an offset between the upper and lower arms. And then you look up in a chart and see how many shims you run inside versus outside and all that. So it takes a while to set these up and I always kind of like dry assemble them first and um, kind of snug them down a little bit and make sure there's no binding. And then once I'm happy with that, then I'll go back and grease everything up and, and put it together uh, for the final time. And so, yeah, this side uh, was, uh, the offset was six millimeters and the the shims were pretty much by the book. I was pretty happy with them. The other side also measured six millimeters. I wasn't happy with the shims. So I actually took an additional shim from the outside and put it on the inside to, uh, to make up a little bit more um, distance in there and to get it where I was happy with. So uh, to me, the, the guides, uh, the guide, the, the shims based on that dimension it's like a starting point. I don't consider it gospel. That's why I always do a, uh, like a dry assembly and check things. And then once I'm happy with it, with whatever number of shims it ends up with, then that's when I go ahead and, again, grease everything out, put it together. Um, these bolts are also original. You can read it. Yeah, look at that. Woo, K-Max. Beautiful. So, yeah, those are back from zinc plating. And so yeah, I went ahead and, and got those on on both sides, got them adjusted, got them greased to my liking. And then from there, I went ahead and assembled the brakes, both sides. So the brakes are complete now. The, the drums, I packed the bearings, I put on the inner seals. The drums are pretty much on there for good now. The only thing I have to do is I have to pull the nuts back off because for some reason this car didn't seem to have the, the thrust washer, which is kind of a thick washer that goes between the nuts and the bearing. So I'll get those early next week and just, just a matter of like pulling those nuts back off and then putting the thrust washer on and then putting the nuts back on with the little uh, lock plates, little sheet metal lock plates that keep those from, from uh, coming loose potentially. 
So yeah, I got all that done. I uh, went ahead and, and assembled and put on the steering box. It's, um, it's a little loose right now and that's on purpose because until we get the body and kind of figure out what angle the steering tube is gonna be at, you know, say we put it on and the steering tube is coming like that, then we would tilt the steering box itself to kind of match that angle so everything ends up um, lined up. So for now, this is just on here, but just a matter of loosening up the, the two bolts on the clamp and then you can kind of rotate it to your heart's content to make sure everything is, is lined up perfectly. But going ahead and putting it on is, uh, you know, it's, it's still a good use of time because again, you just loosen it up and rotate it. And that allowed me to go ahead and put on the tie rods. I did kind of like a, you know, quick eyeball um, alignment. It's, it'll have to be aligned obviously once the car is, is sitting on the ground and uh, moving the steering box uh, around, twisting it this way affects the alignment because of the angle of, of the tie rods, especially this side. So yeah, you know, I'll just kind of get it like roughly in the ballpark. And then when we put the car on the ground and get it weighted, then we'll do a final alignment. But uh, yeah, so the front end of the car is together other than shocks. I ordered shocks today, talked to the owner, uh, Jim, and he had done a bunch of reading and found out that it's a pretty bad idea to put anything other than oil shocks on these cars. The gas shocks that are available for these cars are pretty stiff and these cars weigh nothing. So apparently putting gas shocks on one of these cars pretty much makes it ride like a, like a dump truck. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, Wolfsburg West Vita Beetle shocks on it, which are correct oil dampened shocks, and they're they're not too stiff. They they ride pretty nice. I think they're gonna be good on this on this lightweight buggy. So those are coming Monday, and so other than putting those on, um, I also ordered the uh, the rubber snubbers here for the front axle um, travel limit. So other than putting those few things on, this chassis is pretty much done. I even put the little grommets on today on the on the fuel lines and cut them down a little short, shorter. They had been left kind of long by uh, by Washburn shop. And what else? Yeah, pretty much shocks and a couple other little details. And this puppy is going to be ready, just sitting here waiting patiently for its beautiful metal flake red um, body to come in and join it. So. That is it for today, guys. Um, it's hot and I'm tired and it's a little bit earlier than I usually quit, but I think I'm gonna go home and take a, uh, take a cold shower and sit in the air conditioning and enjoy the rest of my Friday. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching and hope, hope everyone has a good weekend and we'll see you guys Monday, bye.